Well, hey, Church Online, as uh, always, it's just an honor to have you worshiping with us this weekend, and uh, today we're actually wrapping up our Love My City series. We've covered a lot of ground together these past several weeks, uh, but as we wrap this up, more than anything, if you're a Christian, man, I want you to know that God has called you to ministry that God has plans for you, that he's even strategically placed people around you for you to love and for you to serve and for you to minister to. And understand that for the rest of your life, God is going to ask you to do things for him, uh, for yourself, uh, for people around you. Like all throughout the Bible, we see that God calls people. And what I mean by that is he speaks to people. He prompts them. He moves them, leads them to say something or do something or go somewhere to encourage someone to speak truth. Uh, but how you and I respond to God's call, well, that's, that's kind of up to us. And that's what I want to talk about today. And so we're going to look at three different uh, men in the Bible uh, all of them eventually did what God was asking them to do, but initially they all responded differently. And so the first guy we're going to look at is Jonah. Jonah responded to God's call this way. He said, here I am, I'm not going. In Jonah 1.1, God spoke, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. And the good news is that the word of the Lord will come to you. Like God is a God who loves to speak. Like he spoke the universe into being. He said, let there be, and there was. Ever since then, God has been speaking to his people, sometimes with an audible voice, sometimes through his prophets, other times through circumstances. But the truth is that God speaks constantly through the voice of his Holy Spirit. And if you've never, ever heard the voice of God, you can and you will today if you simply open up His Word. I mean, it's as easy as reading your Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 says that all Scripture is God-breathed. Okay, it is the breath of God. It's the revelation of Him to us. It's very literally Him speaking to us. All scripture is God breathed and it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God, or we could say the woman of God, would be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Hebrews 4.12 tells us that the word of God is living, it's active, and the word of the Lord will come to you. God may speak to some of you a very specific word uh, to change something, to move in a new direction, to remain faithful, to be obedient to what He says to you. And at that moment, you will have a choice. You can do what God wants you to do, or you can do what Jonah did and disobey. Jonah 1.1, 1, 1, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But verse 3 tells us that Jonah ran away from the Lord. He said, yep, here I am, God. I'm not going. And I wonder how many of you have had a similar experience where you felt prompted to do something, but frankly, you just didn't want to do it. Like, no thanks. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not down for that. You know, I don't even like that person. Why would, why would I serve them? You know, I can't do that. I've already made plans. God, here I am. Uh, yeah, but I'm not going. You know, and others of you, maybe not so deliberately, but you know that God has prompted you to do something, and you haven't done it yet. Maybe even in the last several weeks, in the midst of this series, God is speaking to you some things. And for whatever reason, you know, maybe it seems like a little thing that God is calling you to reach out or to say something, to, to help someone, but you've responded by saying, yeah, not today, uh, I'm not going to do that. I know there's been moments like that for me where I felt prompted by the Lord to, 
do or say something, but I, I know I missed the opportunity. I didn't do it. Maybe it was inconvenient, or I put it off so long that I forgot about it. But like Jonah, uh, there's been times in my life where I just really wasn't fully available uh, to what God wanted uh, me to do. The second response that I want us to look at today is Moses. This is what Moses said. He said, here I am. Send somebody else. In Exodus chapter 3, uh, Moses saw a burning bush. And when he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush. Moses, Moses. And Moses said, uh, here I am. And in verse 10, he says, so now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Like, this is something Moses would have agreed needed to happen, but instead of saying, Sure, God, I'll go. Moses said, Who am I? I'm I'm a nobody. I'm not good enough. I'm not talented enough. I'm not a good communicator. Like, surely there's someone else better suited for this task than me. And we see Moses just going back and forth with God, basically presenting his resume as to why he was the wrong person for the job. Exodus 4 and verse 10, Moses said to the Lord, he says, Oh Lord, I've never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you've spoken to me. I am slow of speech and tongue. Here I am, God, send someone else. Lord, he says in Exodus 4.13, he says, Lord, I please send someone else to do it. I'm not the right person. You know, it's so easy uh, for us to do this. You know, listen, I'm not going to give. They should give. They got more money than I do. You know, I'm not going to go. I don't have as much time as they do. She can do it. You know, he can do it. God, they're better equipped for this task. Why are you calling me, send someone else. You know, I remember kind of having this feeling when God was calling us to move to Clinton, to this place four hours away where we'd never been to before, to, to start a church and to plant something new and just feeling unqualified and not ready and not knowing like God, you know, send somebody else. Jonah says, here I am, I'm not going. Moses says, here I am, send somebody else. Isaiah, though, responds very differently. And we talked about it in week two. Isaiah says, here I am, send me. Send me. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. He says, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And before we read his response, I want you to notice what he didn't say. He didn't say, where are you sending me? Is, Is the climate nice there? What's the cost of living? You know, what kind of pay range are we talking about? Are there benefits? How much vacation do I get, right? He didn't ask for any of that. What he simply did is essentially signed a contract that was blank and said, God, here I am. Send me. Use me. I'm available. God, you have permission to interrupt my plans. God, if you want me to go somewhere, I'll go. If you want me to stay, I'll stay. If you want me to say something, if you want me to speak, to be quiet, to pray, to give something away, if you want me to use my time, whatever you need me to do, wherever it is, God, here I am. Send me. Amen. What a response. You know, I was thinking about that and just wondering, like, how do we get there? How do we get to that kind of attitude before God where we are fully surrendered to his plans for our life and his will and his purpose. And so what I want to do with the rest of our time together is I want to look at the verses that were leading up to that surrendered response from Isaiah. And I want to point out three things that we see in his story that I I believe you need to fully, fully surrender to God. Number one, if you're taking notes, is an experience in God's presence. An experience with the presence of God. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1 says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord 
seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. See, Isaiah had a genuine experience in the presence of God where he saw the Lord in all of his glory, in all of his majesty. And he goes on to talk about these angelic beings who are, who are worshiping and praising the living God. Verse 2 says, Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces. With two they covered their feet. And with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. And when Isaiah saw this and he experienced the presence of God, it completely transformed who he was. Because the presence of God changes us. The prophet Samuel told King Saul in 1 Samuel 10, 6, he said, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power and you will prophesy with them and you will be changed into a different person. You know, personally, I can take you back to moments in my life where I had such a genuine encounter with God's presence that it changed me, that it changed the, the trajectory of my life. Moments where I could just sense the very real presence of a holy God filling me and renewing me, strengthening me, comforting me, loving me, equipping me. I mean, it was so real and so genuine that it brought me to a deeper place of surrender to God. Those moments where I have called out the Lord saying, God, I am your servant. And if there's anything you want of me, I'm yours. I'll go. Send me. You know, some of you, maybe you're hearing that and you're saying, Pastor, that's never really happened to me before. But I'm telling you, if you're a believer, that it absolutely can happen to you. Because God wants to reveal himself to you. In fact, Scripture teaches us that when you draw near to God, He will draw near to you. So James says, James chapter 4 and verse 8, Jeremiah 29 and verse 13, the Lord says, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Even in the normal rhythms of life. You know, there's times where I've just been driving in my car or praying with my kids before bed or Certainly times that I'm here at, at church or at a fresh service or something where the presence of God is just, it's felt, it's real, it's genuine, He's near. But I'm telling you, wherever you're at, when you draw near to God, He will draw near to you. you know, but maybe you're not as available to God as you should be because you haven't really experienced His presence. Maybe you haven't been seeking after Him. But if you want to be fully surrendered and available to God, I believe that you need a genuine experience with His presence. The second thing you need is an awareness of your own sinfulness. In fact, I'm going to argue one of the biggest cultural lies that people believe today is that I'm a good person, that you're a good person, she's a good, we're good people. But I'm telling you that without the blood of Jesus, uh, we're not good people. You're not a good person. I'm not a good In the eyes of God, uh, we're all sinners. Like regardless of, of your upbringing or your moral compass or your social standing, Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. Of God. And when Isaiah saw the goodness of God, when he saw just how holy and how righteous God was, in that moment he recognized his own unrighteousness and he had an awareness of his own sinfulness. He saw the Lord and the angels calling out, Holy, holy, holy. And verse 4 says that at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook. And the temple was filled with smoke. And in verse 5, Isaiah says, Woe to me, I'm ruined. Another translation says, I'm undone. I'm, I'm nothing. Oh, I'm a sinner. I've got nothing to offer. I'm pathetic. He's holy. 
I'm not. He's righteous. I'm unrighteous. He's full of glory. I'm full of sin. Woe to me, Isaiah says, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. What does it get to a place where you're fully available and fully surrendered to God? It takes a genuine awareness of your sinfulness. It takes an experience in His presence. And number three, an understanding of God's grace. It doesn't end with just with your own sinfulness. The story ends with a beautiful picture of God's conquering, powerful grace. And when you understand how amazing His grace really is, it brings you to a point of surrender. In verse 6, Then one of the seraphs, Isaiah says, flew to me with a live coal in his hands, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth, and he says, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. What happened? He recognized, I'm ruined. I'm a man of unclean lips. But with one touch from the goodness of God, his sins were forgiven and completely atoned for. And I want you to just imagine this and internalize this, okay? Your lying lips, forgiven. Your lustful attitudes, forgiven. Your self-centered thoughts, forgiven. Your angry outbursts, forgiven. Every secret sin that you've never even told anybody before, but God knows it all. Forgiven as if they never happened. Scripture says God separates your sins as far as the east is from the west, and He remembers them no more. 1 John 1.8 says if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth isn't even in us. Okay, we need to be aware of our sin, of how desperately we need a Savior. But he says in verse 9, if we confess our sin, if we say the same thing about our sin as God does, then He's faithful, He's just, and He'll forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Listen, when you understand the grace of God, it transforms everything. I mean, the same way that that coal touched his lips and removed his guilt the blood of Jesus covers our sins Romans 3 23 says that all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus when we sense God's presence when we're aware of our own sinfulness and then we experience the unmatched, undeserved grace of God through Jesus. Our only reasonable response is, here I am, God, send me. I'm available. All that I am, all that I have is yours. Jesus, use me for your kingdom, for your glory. Here I am, send me. It's the same response we see in the New Testament when Jesus called the first disciples in Luke chapter 5. Scripture says that they left everything and they followed Jesus they left their boats their careers their dreams family they said we're all in Jesus they signed a blank contract and said okay if we can follow you then we're in use us send me and if you're telling us that we can make a difference and you are who you say you are then we're yours and not just a little bit not kind of but radically completely and totally surrendered to Him. And I'm so excited right now because, man, I've just been sensing that there are men and women in our church that are rising up right now. I can see it. I feel it. I believe it. There's many of you that are, are stepping across the line. Okay, you're jumping in with both feet. You're not just playing the game or going through the motions you're not content to be one way on Sunday and then somehow different the rest of the week you want to live a life worthy of the calling that you've received 
You want to uh, live the kind of life that Jesus wants for you. And I'm telling you right now that God is going to do something supernatural through those of you that go beyond church attendance or your religious preference and actually make yourself available to God because you are a minister with a specific purpose at an opportune time to make an eternal difference. And if you're willing to respond to God's call like Isaiah and say, God, use me, He will. He will. Now, does that mean He's going to make you sell everything and go be a missionary in Africa and never use a real toilet as long as you live? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But it's way more likely that He's going to call you to be a missionary where you work. It's more likely that He's going to call you to serve the people that are in front of you, to be faithful with what He's already given you. He may prompt you to serve somewhere in the church, maybe in the two-year-old room, which is kind of like going to Africa because they don't go in toilets there either. He may call you to lead a life group. He may prompt you to foster. He may prompt you to give above your tithe. I don't know what He's going to prompt you to do, but I want to encourage you in advance, like Isaiah, to respond with obedience. Blank contract, here I am, God, send me, I'm all yours. And Father, I pray today, Lord, that we would truly, honestly experience you in such a way that our lives are different. God, for every person, wherever they're, wherever they're engaging from right now, God, in their living room, in their office, at a friend's house, in the car. Lord, I just pray that they would experience your presence. God, that they would take a moment to just seek you with all of, our, all of their hearts. And God, as we draw near to you together in this moment from all around, God, as we draw near to you, Lord, would you draw near to us? God, would you make your presence known? God, would your presence change us today? God, would your presence bring peace in the middle of every difficult situation? Would your presence bring hope and comfort that goes beyond the world's ability to comprehend? God, would your presence bring just an overwhelming uh, joy and expectancy about the days to come? And Lord, would your presence, as, uh, as Samuel says, would it change us? God, would you make us and mold us into the people that you want us to be? And God, I just pray, Lord, as I believe you've been speaking and I've been hearing from many of our church family over these last several weeks, God, that you're prompting them, that you're speaking to them, that you're leading them in a new direction, that you're, that you're helping them to keep their focus on you and where it needs to be, God, that, Lord, that those moments with you, those times where you've called and you've prompted and you've spoke, God, would be met with obedience and availability. Hey, and as you're praying today, I know this is a different format than maybe what you're used to, uh, but I just want to take a moment and recognize maybe what God is doing in your heart right now. Maybe it's during worship. Maybe it's been during this message. God's been stirring in you and helping you recognize what Pastor Jeremiah was talking about in, the, in those last couple of points, recognizing our own sinfulness. The Bible says that we've all sinned. The Bible says that, we've, that we all fall short We've all made mistakes and the penalty for that sin is death. And that's something to not be taken lightly. That's eternal death. That's, that's something that's, that's heavy. I understand that. And I just, I'm so grateful for that final point that he was talking about. We need to grasp and understand his grace. It's through his grace that we are saved. And so wherever you find yourself today, maybe you're watching uh, from, from home today, maybe you're watching uh, while you're driving or, or listening while you're driving or, or maybe you're at your office. I don't know where you are, but I know God sees you right where you are today. And I just encourage you, if you felt that during the service, towards the end of the service, of that, that feeling in your heart that you're recognizing your need for a relationship with Jesus, I don't want you to take that lightly. That's, that's the Holy Spirit prompting you. That's the Holy Spirit convicting you of, of where you find yourself right now. And so what I want to do is I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus, just like Pastor was talking about, saying, here I am, send me. Today for you, maybe the answer 
very, the very beginning answer for you is yes to Jesus. So if you want to make that decision today, I want to pray with you. We're so excited for you. Uh, but man, would you just pray a prayer? It doesn't have to be exactly like this. Uh, but man, would you posture your heart in the same way? Jesus, I thank you for those who are watching right now, God, who are making that decision to follow you. And God, I just pray that, um, Lord, would you forgive me of my sin? God, the mistakes that I've made, my past, Lord, that's, that's broken and, and, and tattered. Jesus, would you pick up the pieces in my life? I surrender to you, Lord. I recognize that, that I've messed up. I recognize that I've made mistakes. And Jesus, it's because of your grace that I'm saved. And so, Lord, I surrender my heart to you. Jesus, come into my life. Change me from the inside out. I give everything to you. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 You know, I just, I, I want to just take a moment. If that was you, um, man, from the bottom of our hearts, we just want to say congratulations. Yeah. My spirit is stirred right now. I believe that there is somebody watching right now that just made the best decision That's right. um, of, of your entire life. And this is just the beginning. This is the beginning of, of healing. This is the, begin, uh, the, the beginning of your future, of, right. of your walk with Jesus. And so I'm going to ask that you do something really brave right now. Yep. Um, I, I want you to let us know. Um, it, it can feel scary. It can, it can make you feel nervous, like you don't want to be seen. But please let us know. You, you don't have to drop it in the chat. You can connect with us. You can fill out a digital connect card that is super private. Uh, we, we just want to reach out to you and we want to help you in this journey with Jesus. Because Absolutely. it's just the beginning. That's exactly right. Yeah. We also genuinely, if you find yourself in a place right now where God's working on your heart and you want some prayer, we have people yeah. that would love to pray with you right now. If you're on our online platform, we've got live hosts ready to pray with you. Uh, and so we just encourage you to do that today. Uh, church, what an amazing time in yes. God's presence today. What an amazing amazing time uh, just hearing uh, from our pastor what a great series that we just wrapped up uh, love my city I just I'm so inspired to just come in line with with what we've been talking about yeah. over the last few weeks and uh, and just being aware of how I can love and serve and, and just be who God's called me to be yes. even in my own community yeah. and I hope that that's the same for yeah. you so glad that you joined us online this weekend <laughs> Please, please, please follow us on our social medias. Yes, do it. Uh, keep up with us during the week. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, church, we just love you so much. And we hope that you have the best week. We'll see you guys here next weekend, Saturday at 4 and Sunday at 9 and 11.